Hey guys, welcome. Well, I just made a couple more honey locust bowls. Uh, I didn't video this one, but I did this one. This one is just a regular side grain off a big old piece. It, it turned out all right. It's, it's pretty well. It's beautiful. Now this one, this one is out of a crotch. And, and it is really pretty. I mean, just look at that grain in there, will you? And just look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So anyway, I'm going to show you how I made this. So hang in there, I'm going to show you. But first, uh, in case any of you guys are interested in a beaver, I'm the second set of beavers my friend made, oh, they went in a heartbeat. I mean, like in probably 10, 12 hours, they were all sold out. There's 24 of them. Uh, he's in the process of going to make some more, and I'll, I'll be posting it at the front of my whatever video I have that, you know, he does them. But in the meantime, I suggest anybody interested, make sure you have that notification bell mashed or clicked or whatever you do to it. All right, let's get on and make this bowl. Oh, one more thing. I think you'll find this interesting. When I started turning the inside, I took four different cutting tools, and I made sure they were super sharp. I took a 5-inch bowl gouge, and, you know, I sharpened it. I showed it in the video. I took a scraper, a negative rate scraper. I, I put a new burr on it. I took a brand-new round cutter, and then a brand-new, um, just round cutter, and then a brand-new... Uh, square cutter on my beaver and we cut in the same wood and I just compare them all so hanging there it's about halfway through and you'll see which one one out I give you a hint starts with a B hey don't assume anything that could have been bowl gouge bowl scraper bowl cutter or beaver so you just have to watch and see Let's do it. Uh, here's half of a real nice honey locust crotch. I didn't think about videoing it until I had it sold, so I apologize for that. But here's half of it right here. I'm going to mount it up and turn a bowl. I'd like to have turned a uh, natural edge bowl, but, but the, bark is, eh, the bark's no good. So here's the other half right here. I've got it anchor sealed. I'll save it for another day. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this down and get the center and get a face plate on it and get it on there and we'll see what happens with it. I went ahead and cut the corners off on the bandsaw. Now I'm putting the, putting the face plate on. We are on the lathe. Got it all face plated and ready to go. I whirled it up. Got about 500 and something. I'll do it again here. Got my uh, face shield clean, got my beaver ready. Let's see what we got. I'll, I'll start out here and work and go this way. Got a real heavy part right there. And we'll try to get most of it off real quick. Well, I don't know about the real quick stuff, but I'll try to get it off. Alright. I got 460 something. 461. That ought to work for now. This away, clean that up, and put a tenon on it. What do you think? That ought to work.
fear. I almost got it all. I could cut it down a little more. I don't want it. But I guess trying to chip off one of right here. I'll put a little C8 right bar. It's pretty in there. This stuff's really pretty. Yeah. Sap wood's got enough. It'll be all right. So let's just play the side. This old drill with this little bitty drill bit on it, in it, like on it in. This is what I use it for. Works real well. Because they do get clogged, I don't care who you are, what you do. That's one uh, one coat of the sealer. Uh, being this is water based, it will raise the grain. You can feed it. So I always take 320 after the first one and uh, sand it down a little bit. Don't need anything else, guys. I'm going to put another one on anyway. I got it quick right there. But I mean, the thicker the better. Well, it's still shiny this morning. Go ahead and get this uh, chuck on and get her flip Make green mark, and that's where you go to. The thing I wanted to emphasize here is I uh, just said, uh, you know, another safety deal. I'm into safety stuff, and all my turning, I've yet to have an accident, not saying I won't, but I think a lot of it is because I practice safe turning. Now, here's, here's one thing you should do. When you're drilling a hole like that and you're using a uh, Morris taper, uh, a Jacobs chuck, when you're turning it in, it's not too critical. But when you pull it out, can you imagine what would happen if that Morris taper came out of there while, you, while this was turning? Wham, wham, wham. It would really hurt you. Could hurt you. So the thing to do is come under here and grip it underneath like this and make sure everything's tight. And then you want to start really, really slow. And you want to go in. There you go. Now this wood's got a little bit of moisture content, so anytime they do, you, you just have to come out and back in. Not all together this morning. All right. Let's dump this rascal.
get it out of there if we can. Don't necessarily have to have a dip hole, but it does two purposes. You see this thing we jigger up made here? That's a live center. It's got a Jacobs chuck on it. That's a piece of uh, old drill drill bit. So I just put her in there, sharpen the top, and this is uh, this is what I do with it. I come in here and I just I use it like a live center. What that does for you, it gives you room to go in there and cut. And if this was to come off, it is it's only going to go here. It's not going to go here or, you know, fall down and break it or whatever. So let's get a uh, tool wrist out here. Somebody asked me where I, I bought my tool wrist. And I, so one of the comments, get this thing, thing working. I guess that's one of the bad parts of having a big lace. They also have big banjos. Anyway, they asked me about my tool wrist. And I only own one tool wrist that's factory built, so there's your answer. This ain't one of them. I make all my own. Okay, what are we doing here? Oh, we're looking for the beaver. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just straighten up this right here because i got something planned I'm going to show you in, in a minute. When I use my beaver, I like to have the uh, tool wrist pretty close to the wood. And I like to cut on the center, especially on big flats. Now, if I'm sort of change my technique a little bit, if I'm cutting on the round out here, I try to go a little high because I found out that if I go low, if I come in here, well, let's just I'll move this all the way. If I come in here and I'm low, like this, let's see if you can see that. Hold on a minute. Uh, you can't see that. Come up here, just a hair. Okay, there you go. Okay, if I come in here and I'm low, let's do it from the side, you can see better. Ah. Got to modify everything these days. If I come in low, you see what see what we got? We got it coming in at uh, too much of an angle and it's gonna do this on you. But if I come in a little bit high, it's gonna come in here and slice it more. Either on center or a little high, but not low. Okay, got it. Now I'm gonna try to see if I can get back to where I was. Go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and whirl it up to a thousand. And all I want to do is all I want to do is make me a flat here, and you'll see why in a minute. Ow! I hit my damn funny bone. Ow! 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 Funny bone, I don't care to told you. Okay, I'm gonna have to change this cutter out. Oh, I just noticed there's it, the corners knocked off. Must have either hit a screw or something with it, and it's chipped totally off. So I can rotate it around. I think I'll just put another one on. I'll be back in a minute. Well, we'll uh, I'll meet you over the sharpener a minute. You'll see what I'm doing. All right, what I'm going to do is a uh, comparison cut. Now, just, just to make sure everything's on an even keel, that's why I flattened the top of that. I've got a 5 8 bowl gouge here. It's all set up, ready to go. I've got, I'm, I don't normally do this, but just to show you, I put black magic marker on there so you can see that it's sharpening good. And here's my scraper, bowl scraper, and I've done the same thing yet. I'm going to sharpen it. Put a brand new round cutter on there. 
and I got a brand new uh, square cutter on my beaver. So I'm going to use each one and we'll see which one cuts the best. Maybe. So let's get this one sharpened up first. Get this out of the way. This is uh, like 600, so it, just, it makes it sharp, 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 sharp. Good. You want to do this for your, your magic marker. It's gone up near the top. It didn't take very long. Make sure it's not even a little bit showing. Got a little bit showing right there. Light touch. All right. I believe we're in business there. Also got this already set up for this. Very good. Now this this is like uh, oh I can't remember like 300 or something like that. But I, it puts a better burr on than the fine one. There you go, you can see that. And the other two are already ready to go. So let's go back over here. See what we can do. I guess I'll take this off. Might work a little better. Ah. Alright, let's take our tools over there and we'll commence to whittler. Whittle. <laughs> Whittle. Can't even say it. Alright, we're ready to go. I'm gonna start off with the bowl gouge. And uh, I'm going to do both a push and a pull cut. I like my wrist in pretty close. i make sure I'm on center. Looks like I could be a little low on this one. I have to change it for each one, you know, they, they are a little different. In here. Yeah, that's good. All right. I like to turn fast too, so I'm going to turn pretty fast. Probably a grand. Here, make me a start the groove. say that did an acceptable job. I was having to put some pressure on it though, uh, especially toward the end. This is really hard wood, so that's commendable. All right, let's, do the, let's try the round cutter my way because well, that's pretty in there, isn't it? You've got to see it. This was a crotch, so you can see it right in here. So, you know, I'm on center, so I always like to come in at an angle. I don't normally ever cut like this. Uh, I just find it works better for me. So this is our brand new spick and 
pan round cutter. And I'll try to exert a close to the same amount of pressure. Too. I think maybe the gouge was a little bit better. Okay, I got a little place I gotta fix there. Alright, what are we gonna do now? Alright, let's try the scraper. Got a fresh, fresh burr on it. Didn't quite get all the way in there. A little low anyway. Come on now. Negative rake scraper. It did okay, but uh, it's not it's not as good as the round cutter or the uh, gouge. And it's really not meant to be. I use this for finishing more than anything. In, the insides of bowls is most, mainly where I use it. All right, now we're going to go to the beaver. You see uh, that tear out there on that one, which I didn't see on the round cutter or the gouge. Fix the place there, got to fix the seat. And right there. Got to fix two little places there, no biggie. Alright. Let's do the beaver. Okay. Again, I like uh, I like my rest in as close as I can get them. Especially with the beaver because you see, the beaver's got a flat right there, which makes it really nice. That's one reason I like this particular uh, rest because it's, you know, it's flat right there and you know yourself that it really helps. And, you know, my handle is long enough where I can put it up against my side. This lathe is too high to go against your hip unless you're, you know, using a gouge like this. But that's sort of like having a second rest out here is what it does. But uh, most of the time I, I just use my arms out here like this on a beaver because I'm usually way over here. Plus, I don't want to block the camera. So where are we? We're, uh, we're a little high. That's okay. So let's roll this up and see what we got.
All right, guys. The results are in. Hands down, the beaver wins. As far as you know, taking material out. Now they they, they leave the ugliest finish. But like my friend and I, Bruce, were discussing yesterday, we don't care at this point. We don't care about the finish until we get almost finished, and then our last few cuts are finishing cuts. So there you are. So I'm going to proceed with the beaver now, and we'll wrap this sap sucker up. But I was surprised the gouts did as well as it did, and it was super sharp, I'm telling you. All right, let's whip this baby out. Right here, so you can get in here to it. Let's see if we can't cut this off. Hey, well, there you go, guys. It's, uh, it's all done now. I think it turned out really nice. Might could have used a little more buffing on the inside because I had this, it had a bunch of, uh, like uh, the finish marks on it, like brush marks, and I had to sand them out, and I, I may have got a little deep. 
And I, I could do it again. You know, it'll go on the shelf anyway. So there it is. Got some little sapwood showing right there. Look, shadowy too. Shep, sapwood, as I said, right there. It sort of adds a different uh, look to it. And you can see that there's the pith. It's all... I soak them down with uh, CA glue when I start making sure, you know, they they don't go running on you because then those cracks are sort of like a crack in your windshield. If you don't put a stop to it, it'll just continue. And I think it turned out really nice. So anyway, that's that's how it's done. So uh, subscribe, tell your friends, and all that kind of good stuff. And I guess we'll catch you on the next one. That was number 178. I don't have any ideas on 179 yet. I'm looking for ideas. I got lots of honey locusts. Uh, but I imagine y'all are getting tired of honey locusts. But there's a fly running over there. But, uh, you know, I, that's what I got. I, you know, I got all kinds of other woods. But this honey locust is really pretty. So it's, it's sort of hard not to want to turn it. Because everybody likes pretty things. Let me flip it over one more time give you a better look at it. I mean, that's just, you know, that was a crotch, but it was a, sort of an offset crotch. You know, one come down a little low right in this area. I don't know what you call that, but it is a very, very unusual. So there you are. Like I said, subscribe, tell your friends, and call your mama. See you.